Let's try this again. Got it all wired up right there. Probe is right there. And when I hit it, bingo. I got it figured out. And if you want to know more about the setup and everything behind this, Entirely Crimson has a awesome video here somewhere. Go check that out if you want to know how to set this thing up. There we go again after trying it a second time. That's three ten thousandths more. Not a big deal. But still, the tool height setter on the surface plate said 3.315. So we're four thousandths over that. I'm going to double check it on this thing over here. It's still 3.3155. Maybe it's more accurate when it's in the machine. That's what, that's what I'm going for here. That's what I'm thinking. You know, when you think about it, when it's a shorter tool height set over here at the granite surface plate and it's actually longer over here in the machine like it's shown on this thing hopefully this thing is accurate they're both Chinese tools so it's, it's, it's a toss up but when you think about it that's why I probably keep getting a, a like when I face both sides so when I machine apart flip it over and machine the other side that that right there is probably why I'm getting a thinner part that makes sense. Before I get out of my probe setting work coordinates, I'm going to set the tool height with this Superfly. I'm going to take the Superfly and buzz off this top part, flip it over, and then machine it to size. So the end thickness that I want for this thing is 0.4 inches. It's 0.5 inches right now. Depending on who you're talking to, I think we're about three thousandths under, most all the way around. So 0.4 would be right there, and then we go, that's about three thousandths under. Never once have I made chips like that. I was taking some hardcore passes. I'm going like 25 inches a minute with the Superfly, which isn't really terrible, but I'm just saying it could have flexed a little bit as I was cutting. 
I don't know if you caught that before, but this thing was going down really far before. Basically, this thing has a the height switch to set the height, whatever. It's, it's barely when, when it just touches it. That's the switch that it uses to set the height. And then it also has an over travel switch. So I hooked it up to the over travel switch on accident. Well, mainly because I can't, I don't know what wires go where because everything was the Chinese thing, you know. So anyway, it should now look something like this. And just barely touch it. So I was able to still use that old tool height setter that I got in the first video. I just went in the back end of Pathpilot and switched some things around. Now, if you don't know anything about the back end of Pathpilot, you hit the control alt F2 and then you go operator operator for the username and password and then you can see every file and you can adjust it however you want. But I don't recommend that without getting someone that knows something about it because I knew nothing about it. I still know barely anything about it. I know a little bit to be dangerous. But I would get somebody that knows something about it and then if you want to adjust stuff from there, you can. Luckily, I have a guy that knows all that stuff and he is overly willing to help me out with a lot of stuff, even with the plasma CNC and Pathpilot there. That's sort of how all this started. So, he's here. So yeah, got this thing set up. Just goes to show that you don't have to spend $900 on a tool setter. This is repeatable. There's some little, little tweaks we gotta do to figure some things out. But other than that, I think it works very well for what it is and for what this machine is. I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching.